Hello, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, we're going to get started. All right. My name is Mike McGuire. I teach uh, communications here at the college. Uh, today, we're here with students from COM 101. Uh, COM 101 is a course that not only introduces students to college level reading, I mean, sorry, college level uh, writing, but also challenges them to think critically. Uh, so my students have been focusing their writing and thinking this semester on the aims of education, which is appropriate because most students have been deeply immersed in schooling for 12 plus years of their lives. They have grown up in school in large part. Uh, indeed, most of us have. Uh, when we are drenched in the normalcy of shared experience, it is easy not to question it, not to examine it. So this semester we have taken that as our charge to direct our critical thinking in this direction of education. Towards that end, my students and I have used an approach called deliberative dialogue. Deliberative dialogue is a face-to-face -face method of interaction where small groups of diverse individuals come together to exchange and weigh ideas and opinions about a particular issue that they all care about. It is a form of guided discussion aimed at finding the best course of action. For this dialogue, we made use of an issue framework from the National Issues Forum, which had us ask the question, how should higher education help us create the society we want? Students considered three broad priority areas and from this worked through a process to arrive at specific action recommendations for higher education to help achieve a shared vision of society. In a moment, I will invite several groups of students to come forward to present action recommendations. But first, I thought it might be helpful to show you just a few minutes of this starter video uh, on this topic from the National Issues Forum. So let me just play a few minutes of this to help set the context. Okay, sorry about that, you never know. Um, let me just kind of finish up what the video was gonna show you, the bit I was gonna show you. Um, basically, students considered priorities for higher education as a starting point to their discussions, okay? One was higher education as a means to make us more competitive in a global economy, okay? The second was uh, higher education as a means to um, help an ailing society with respect to uh, civic engagement, uh, skills of collaboration, um, and that sort of thing, right? Uh, respect, integrity, the kinds of values that uh, one might say all individuals should have in a, in a healthy society. So that was priority number two, you know, the second option. And the third, oh, the third was ensuring that everybody has a fair chance, okay? so. Uh, talked about increasing access, availability of higher education, affordability. So these are the three broad topic areas uh, that students explored and worked from as a way of developing uh, what they would like to see higher education be doing to create a kind of society they would like to see. Okay, so that was our that was our starting point. Uh, one last thing before we bring the students up. In, the, uh, in this room, we also have representatives from a number of student support areas on campus across the back of the room there, uh, including the Job Resource Center, the Honors Program, Multicultural Affairs. You could turn around and look at them if you'd like <laughs> as, as, they, as they wave to us. Um, the Speaking and Writing Center. Um, <coughs> before we're done here, we'll have uh, trio support, student services, academic advising, transfer information, student life, and code of conduct and uh, learning enrichment and college readiness. Those are the groups that have uh, said they would be coming here today. Um, we've invited those folks here because today's event is all about maximizing the benefits of higher education, both societally and individually. At some point during today's program, uh, please visit these tables to learn more about the resources available to you uh, on this campus, resources designed to help you succeed. Okay, now without, uh, oh, I'm sorry, one final thing. Uh, after we hear our students' uh, presentations of their action ideas, uh, they've also prepared some visual arguments uh, via these posters here, so please feel free when you're mixing around after the presentations to take a look at their posters and ask them questions, okay? All right, without further ado, let's hear what the students have to say on the direction they would like to see higher education take to help achieve their shared vision of society. Come on up. Okay. Any questions? 
That's I, I, I wanted it. All right, well, our topic was school readiness and debt. Uh, if you, that's our poster over there, the very plain white one. And in the top left, there's a bar graph, and it shows debt per borrower in the United States, and it's based on inflation, and it goes up to 2014. And it just goes to show that every year, people ha gain more and more debt, and people borrowing now will be gaining more and more debt. Under that, there's a pie chart of the dropout rates. And 38% of all dropouts are people that dropped out for financial pressures. And 25% of those people, or 25% of everyone in the pie chart are freshmen. Uh, things we can do to help with debt would be to raise the minimum wage. Uh, on USA Today, there was an article saying that by 2019, the minimum wage should be $13, but I'm not too sure how far that's going. And, um, hello, oh, okay. Never talked to one of these before. So the thing with that uh, minimum wage raising, by 2019, you can see some problems arising with raising the minimum wage to $13 because there have been many arguments about this topic like, oh, why is, li th li like a comment I've recently seen, why is my wife, who has a bachelor's degree, going to be making one more dollar than someone who's working a minimum wage job? And again, it's gonna take time to see. That's why it's such a slow progression to that final amount. Another thing that we can do is we can become aware that the minimum working age is technically 14 with a permit. At the age of 14, you can get a permit from your school and you can go out and get a job and you can start saving for school because not everyone has the advantage of having parents that can help with tuition. Um, We were thinking about another way, and if you could find a local bank, maybe you would be able to talk to, the, talk to a manager at a local bank concerning making an account for only to do with tuition where you would be able to put money into it and it could only, money could only be taken out to be given directly towards the school, but it would have maybe increased annual percentage yield, and et cetera. And with this whole idea of the bank, I recently talked to a local bank that lives near me, and the problem with the idea was, how are they gonna benefit from this? Because of course, big corporation, they wanna be able to benefit from it somehow. So what we were thinking of, what I proposed to them, Maybe the only way you'd be able to receive some of these benefits is that you took up maybe a part-time or maybe a full-time job if you had the time at the bank to possibly pay off the tuition and you'd also get the benefits. Again, you'd need, it, it'd need to go through a whole bunch of barriers with the management. It'd need to be able to go up to the bigger, bigger people of the bank, but that's what we, that's what we were thinking. And the last thing we have for student debt is become aware of jobs that help with tuition. Like UPS has brown bucks, which helps, they help pay for tuition. And Walgreens also helps pay for tuition if you work there. So the next topic we wanted to talk about was student readiness. And one of the main things we thought of first was Parents should help give their children a head start. We're not saying in college, obviously, because they're most likely not going to know like, what their kids are going to be learning in college. 
So we were thinking somewhere around the younger ages, maybe in like grade school, we want the parents to be a more active part of their child's like education. So what we're basically saying is like the whole, I guess the cliche would be, you go home to your kids, you ask them how their day at school was. They say, oh, it's fine. And it's like, oh, that's good. And then conversation just ends there. What we're thinking of is be more active part in that. Say, oh, how was your day at school? Fine. Oh, what do you mean? Is something, is something maybe wrong? It says, no, it's just I'm like not doing so well in a subject. Oh, well, then you want to be there for them. You want to say, oh, maybe I can help you. I said that, that was one of the first things that we thought of. And, and that goes along with the bar graph at the top right of the poster. And it's the likeliness of students or of children at the age of five being ready for school. And 48% of people with a family that comes from lower income, their likeliness to be ready at the age of five is 48%. So where does that go to show what they'll be like in high school? It only gets worse. You can't catch up once you start falling behind. And on a topic of falling behind, we believe students should be for, it should, we, still, we believe that tutoring should be an enforced thing. Because when it comes to tutoring, it's not that some kids don't want the tutoring, it's just that they might not even know about it, or they just might be lazy, but whatever. But again, literally, like right there, there's the tutoring, <laughs> tutoring center. So it's just a matter of, it's just a matter of whether you want the help, honestly, as we believe. And then, um, and then there was l one last thing that I thought about for to help with school readiness. And it's not something a lot of people like to think about, but to lengthen school hours. If you were to add one hour to the end of like every day in high school or grammar school or junior high, and put that towards just doing homework, it would be a detention without the detention, where they would just sit and do their homework. Because I always hear parents say, parents say that kids should be outside playing and not inside doing homework. But if the child always says, or if the child is always thinking about going outside when they're trying to do their homework, it doesn't help. So if you s made them stay in school for that extra amount of time to finish their homework, they could go outside and play when they're done. And this is most comparable to our old high school, me and Adam. We went to Amos Alonzo Stag High School. They had this thing called Common Plan. It wasn't a full hour, but it was a half an hour before class. And what this would do is it gives the teachers that extra chance that they might need to help the students if they so choose. It's not a mandatory, oh sorry, it's not a mandatory thing, but it's that extra step that we believe that is almost a necessity for those kids that might be afraid, they might be embarrassed kind of, because honestly, I was embarrassed once when I, need tutor when I needed tutoring, but then I finally went and I believe it bettered me overall. That is it, folks. All right, let's just keep it going with our next group. Come on up. Next group, okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Sabia. So how many of you guys wanted to attend another school other than Moraine? Well, I'm sure a lot of you guys have. And here to tell you their stories are Gabby and Grace. Hi guys, I'm Gabby, and before attending Moraine, I wanted to attend Loyola. So my family and I were very excited that I actually got in. We even paid the $500 deposit, and when I went to my financial counselor at Loyola, he had told me that my tuition is gonna be about 40,000 a year's total. That shocked me, and I felt like my dreams were crushed because I could not afford that school. So when we came home, we talked about it and had a discussion, and we decided that I will go to Moraine for two years and then attend a public university, which is going to be UAC. Hi, I'm Jade. And because of this, as a group, we came up with five words that higher education should embody. And the first two are for uh, fairness and affordability. 
The real meaning of education is now being lost between the debates about cost and value. Fairness and affordability allow people from different backgrounds and economic statuses to gain higher education without being denied. Everyone deserves a fair chance at higher education, and sadly, education is not what it used to be. The next word is innovation. It is very important because it gives room for growth and new ideas to spark. Without innovation, we wouldn't be where we are today with business or technology. Another word is lifelong learning. Lifelong learning is the ongoing process of knowledge for personal or professional reasons. Lifelong learning opens the mind. It's learning throughout life. As a student, you need to learn about your profession that you will be doing for most of your life. It's so important to take information learned in class and process it and completely understand it. You don't want to take a class and not learn anything from it. So lifelong learning is so beneficial in many ways. It gives us a feeling of self-fulfillment and increases our wisdom. It also helps you grow in your job. And lastly, success. Success is essential for higher education because it can mean so many different things to so many different people. For some, it can mean having a prosperous job, building a healthy family, or just being happy with whatever they decide to do. Higher education should prepare people to become individuals who are career ready, not afraid of a challenge, and people who are persistent in order to embody a healthy and well-educated society. There are many assets here at Moraine, and one includes the Agree to Degree program. This program is a stepping stone towards a higher degree. The students sign a contract basically saying um, that they will try their best and put forth effort to succeed. This program helps students stay on track for pursuing their goal of higher education. As quoted on the Moraine Valley website, you deserve the personal satisfaction that comes from knowing you have reached your goals and having the proof in your hands that shows the level of success. By creating this program, Moraine's goal was to increase college graduation and completion rates. Another asset that Moraine Valley has is the career program. Since I work at the career programs office, I get to see many of the successful accomplishments this um, office has. It mostly consists of programs that are two years long so it can prepare the student for the workforce immediately. Career programs range from mechanics, technologies, and um, health programs. It gives a lot of students hands-on experience so they know what they're doing once they finish the program. I do a lot of evaluations for students usually in nursing and phlebotomy so they always say that there's a lot of hands-on experience in the clinical labs. Uh, they get to talk with doctors and work with staff. So it is a great asset because it gives students the opportunity to reach their goals. There are many issues in our society today that reflects back on higher education. And because of students' lack of education, they are not up to par in the workforce. Therefore, the jobs are being transferred overseas. According to Wall Street Journal, 35 big U.S based multinational companies added jobs much faster than other U.S. employers in the past two years. But nearly three-fourths of those jobs were transferred overseas. Um, I frequently hear the question, where, where are the jobs? And um, because of that, be jobs are not available, but that is because the students are not prepared once they leave college. Marine Valley has some programs in the health field, but what it lacks is, <coughs> is programs in the fields of art, dance, and music. Those careers should not be forgotten. Marine focuses more on health and, mer and math related programs. I was hoping to pursue a career as a beautician and learn about makeup and beauty. Unfortunately, there are not any programs at Marine pertaining to beauty. It'd be nice to have programs like that because it gives the students a sense of what the field is all about. So we went down to the library and we talked to Mr. Troy Swanson, who is the head of the library and the president of the faculty union. He gave us a lot of available information that we didn't know about the college. We found out that um, a lot of money has been recently invested in the reconstruction of the G building uh, and wants to be remade into the new orientation center for students. Uh, our group talked about it and we decided that that money could have maybe been focused towards tuition because the T building is currently fine. And then, um, Another issue that we saw a lot was that students were complaining that there is not enough parking at the school. So instead of making a new gym, maybe we could have focused more on building a parking garage instead. 
Um, other suggestions given by Mr. Troy Swanson was that we could close certain buildings at night because there are way less people attending night classes, so we can consolidate these classes into a few specific buildings and turn the others off to save money. Also, the library and testing centers can be open maybe every other weekend instead of every single weekend. And this may not seem like much, but they, all are, but they are doable actions that will make a difference. Education is such a powerful tool in which we can use to change our society. In order to be a, pro in order to be a proper learning facility, compromises need to be made regarding students' happiness and equality. But also, the deeper parts cannot be forgotten either. College will only grow full of knowledgeable faculty and students if everyone comes together to not only recognize the issues but actually work on them and strive for an improved institution. And as a group, uh, we came up with a call to action. So before I go, hopefully everyone will sign the petition and change will be made. We can't make the change by ourselves. We need your help also. Thank you for your time. Oh, I'm sorry. And before I go, I want to give a special thanks to Mr. Swanson. Good morning, and thank you for taking the time of your, out of your day to attend the Education Action Forum. We are gathered here today to address concerns of students having adequate access to higher education. We will start off by introducing ourselves and telling you a little bit about our story. When I first moved to an English-speaking school, it was hard for me to adjust because of the language barrier. Even most of the students did not care to socialize with me because they did not understand much about the different cultures out there. From this experience, I've learned that acceptance and knowledge are a very important factor for a healthy society within higher education. This can also be an issue for individuals who have different backgrounds as well. This language barrier prevents students to reach a common goal of bettering themselves for a brighter future. However, even others from a different background go through similar experiences. My name is Jennifer, and I grew up in an all-Spanish-speaking community, and with that being said, I was completely oblivious to any other cultures growing up. I ended up moving, and going from a city to a suburb was difficult for me. It was in a community that the majority spoke English, so I guess you could say that I experienced a culture clash early on in my life, and it was difficult for me because I found it hard at eight years old to communicate with students my age. Therefore, I was required to take courses in ESL for three years, and luckily I was able to advance to third grade. It was a really drastic change for me, but the ESL program educated me and helped me advance as an individual. Now, Mohab and I share a similar experience having to do with a culture clash, but that's not the only leading factor that handicaps students from pursuing a higher education. My name is Gabby, and similar to Jennifer, um, I also grew up in a Hispanic community. And although I didn't uh, personally struggle with uh, having a language barrier, my mom wasn't proficient in English. So this ultimately stopped her from furthering her education, which also limited her future opportunities. This, this directly affected me because it um, provided a lower income for my, my large family. And I had a dream to go to a university and be independent from my family, but this dream was crushed because I knew I could never afford going to, to a university with such a high tuition. Um, I knew that financial aid and scholarships were available, but they were very limited, putting most of the financial burden on myself and my family, as well as other students who struggle with the same financial burdens. All of our experiences share a common interest, which is wanting to succeed and expand one's knowledge beyond cultural limits. Now, in order to advance and improve the flaws of higher education, there needs to be equal opportunities granted to each student. 
Now, the continuously rising cost of tuitions is holding back individuals from proceeding with their education. I found it interesting that 57% of Americans say higher education fails to provide students with good value for the money they and their families spend according to a survey of the general public. An even larger majority, 75%, say college is too expensive for most Americans to afford. We feel that a lot of money goes elsewhere and Gabby will elaborate more on that issue. Federal spending is um, not being evenly distributed, which is a, a common problem um, for students in higher education. An example of this would be that annually approximately $40,000 in taxpayers' money is used per inmate in prison. They are given benefits such as health and dental care, computer and internet access, and even funding to earn a degree. This funding is evenly distributed because students in higher education get none of the uh, benefits that the prisoners get. If these resources were made available to students with all different kinds of backgrounds, especially those whose background also directly affects um, income, such as myself, per um, perhaps our horizons could be broadened and the cycle of generational ignorance could cease to exist and we could do better for ourselves than the generation before us. We are here today to make a difference by being heard, to let other multicultural students know that Moraine has a program called English as a Second Language Program that can help you achieve an understanding in the English language at a college level, which is an amazing opportunity to get you on track for a successful future. Moraine is also good for low-income households or anyone else who just wants to save money. You can save thousands of dollars just by starting out in Moraine Valley. We want to encourage diversity among other institutions of higher education. Previous examples, we have stated clear evidence that if we can provide the right service at a reasonable price, such as the ESL program, along with the other programs that should be encouraged, we will head in the direction of a bigger, brighter future, and America will live up to its reputation as the melting pot. All we ask is for you, the audience, to help make this possible. Don't just open your ears, but your hearts along with it. And look around, we all come from a different background. So it should be seen as a priority for the other multicultural students to gain the same opportunity. Now, you can take matters into your own hands and visit credomobilize.com in order to sign a petition to make public college tuition free. Rather than continuing to pour billions more into financial aid programs, this petition will be going to the president, senators, majority leaders, Harry Reid, and House of Speaker John Boehner. You can visit our display board for more information about the petition, and for general information, you can visit the Multicultural Affairs table. Starting today, let's turn this dream into a reality. Thank you. Hello, my name is Keelean and our group is here today to talk about the possible approaches to dealing with the cost of higher education. For starters, it is important to have some idea for the career path you are going for when attending a university. No one wants to pay for classes that aren't suited for their career. The cheapest route would to be attend a community college like Moraine Valley. Community colleges are one of the cheapest ways to achieve higher education and a fraction of the cost of attending a university. The only issue is that when attending a community college, make, making sure your credits transfer over to the university of your choice. Hi, my name's John, and my focus is the fairness of being aware of the career opportunities and the deg degree you're seeking, so that when you're picking your classes, you're not going to pay for classes that aren't going to matter, because some people change their uh, degrees because of job wars and all right, many students after college are unemployed, and the current unemployment rate is 8.5%. And it, I think if, if students are aware of the chances of getting a job in the degree that, they're, that they want, then, they're then they'll have a better chance of getting a job afterwards. Because um, a family member of mine got a degree in business, and right now he's working 60 hours a week, making 
like twelve dollars an hour at a bar, and it's not even close to his degree. So I think if you know the chances of getting a job and the degree you want, then it'll be better for you. Like some people will go for a degree in like medical, and then they'll go out and they won't be able to get a job because there's they're not looking for jobs in that degree. But then you could get one somewhere else that has more of a rate of getting a job after school, and you'll be better off be able to pay off student debts and live a life without worrying about not having the money. And that's why. We were uh, talking about um, trying to find different ways to get to a school without a lot of cost. And I think it first starts before we try to find those ways is being aware as we're younger. Um, I know when I was in high school, I didn't really know about too many different scholarship opportunities and things. But I think now that we know now that we should be able to go back to schools and help other students that really need the money to go to school, um, that we should be able to tell them different opportunities on ways to get to scholarships. And one of the biggest ways is the internet, because I know I use it every day. And the other day I just searched on Google college scholarship opportunities and so many results came up. It was kind of overwhelming, like I didn't know which one to pick. So a big thing is being aware. And also um, not just bringing awareness to the students, but bringing awareness to a lot of state representatives and things because I remember one time a rep came to our school and he kind of had like a meeting with some of us and he told us how if we ever needed to address something or something that we think we needed um, help with, we could write him a letter or send him an email or anything. And it's, it's, it's just the email, you know, it's not that hard to type up something if you're really passionate about uh, helping other people and just making other people aware. And uh, thank you for your time. All right, we're going to keep it rolling here. Right. 1.3 million. That is the number of students who are in debt as of 2012. As the years go on, the number of students in debt is rising. Sooner or later, many of us students in this room will be part of that 1.3 million. By the time we graduate senior year of college, seven out, seven out of 10 of us will be in major debt. As of 2014, students graduated with $33,000 in debt. That is nearly double the amount people had to pay back 20 years ago. Not too many amenities were offered at college long ago either. Many students in this room would agree that they look forward to college because of the social atmosphere, the sports, the parties, the Greek life, and other attractions. My group and I are among the majority that fear having to pay back the loans and having our priorities mixed up. Why do we fear this? We fear this because it is an ongoing to be even more in debt by the time we graduate. And we want to be responsible adults. By, but why should we have to fear this? So students have the fear to further their education and become the person they always wanted to become. But the major question is, why do we have to live in such deep debt? And why are we so prone to distractions? Did, really, really, did we really ask for it? Certainly not. Why are we the ones to suffer from getting an education and messing up our priorities? Better yet, what does the amount of student debt and distractive amenities say about our society? Uh, people should be concerned about what our society looks like because of higher education. College students are hurting financially and college students are becoming more and more irresponsible as time gets, time goes on. Their financial issues are bringing our economy down. Their irresponsibility is making our country look lazy and careless. To some people, it may seem as if our country is incapable of change. We need to prove that people, uh, we need to p prove people wrong. We deserve a society filled with people who are financially stable and responsible, we deserve a society that truly cares. College students are the key to our future in society. In order to change our society, it begins with higher education. My group and I are proud to say that Moraine Valley is an excellent example of higher education that can help bring this kind of change to our society. Moraine does a very good job at offering an education to students for a reasonable price. Moraine is a community college is top 3% of the 2,839 two and four year US institutions uh, granting associate's degree. Some people may say that just because Marine's community college is, uh, it is not up to par with the other four year institutions and they couldn't be more wrong. Some of the many qualities of Marine are the transfer programs which allow you to take one or two years here and then are able to transfer out to go to colleges of your dreams. The best part 
about being able to transfer out is that you'll save thousands of dollars by going here first or instead of going to a four-year college. Marine helps you get right into your degree and start your educational plan off right. Most four-year colleges spend the students' tuition money on unnecessary amenities, which in the long run ends up costing the students more money. Uh, Marine does offer a fitness center, which did cut into the cost of tuition, but also attracted the interest of more students. In this economy, it is important for colleges to keep the cost of tuition down as much as they can by doing this they need to cut back on things that are not beneficial to the students' learning environment. In order to cut back on tuition costs and help better the students' learning environment, college needs to cut back on spending. There are certainly many steps that us students can take if we feel we are the target of a declining economy or an irresponsible society. We have the choice to make decisions. We have to decide on what college to attend based upon our financial standing, and we have the choice of how much we value an education, and better yet, we have the choice to be the face of change. It only takes one student, one affected individual to rise up, one individual to lead, and one individual to inspire. We can make petitions to lower tuition. We can make a petition that demands less spending on amenities and more on education. We can make a petition for more jobs on campus so students are able to have help to pay for the tuition. People need to rise to the occasion to become the spark to the flame. Many signatures means many voices, and many voices brings change. It is time to break this chain. Let's not be the next generation that has to suffer because of student debt. Let's not be the next generation that is filled with irresponsible results. Let's be the next generation that strives to achieve our dreams. College students face an overwhelmingly huge amount of responsibilities throughout their four or more years in the educational institution of choice. College students must deal with issues such as balancing a social life within being a student, an employee, sky-high tuition costs, the constant threat of lifelong debt, and of course, passing their classes. As a group of four college students, we will discuss and share our views on these troubling topics that are relevant to our situation, as well as how we feel about certain aspects of Moraine Valley Community College and how we would work to solve these problems to form a more viable solution for the success of higher education. There are a lot of misconceptions that pop into mind when the phrase community college is mentioned within regards to higher education. Many believe that community colleges are for the less knowledgeable, students who could not or did not do well enough to attend a real university. Contrary to this belief, community colleges, we have learned, are the equivalent to the education received during the first two years at any other university. Credits are transferable and are therefore at the same level of difficulty as universities. However, whether community college or four-year university, each comes with certain aspects that can be approved upon. So having been at Moraine Valley Community College for nearly a full semester, we can say with certainty that this institution does a good job at sticking to its word. But like every college, there are pros and cons to be further elaborated upon. Some issues that we have conversed about and agreed upon were the expensive price tags attached to books and the hectic parking that students need to partake in each and every day. Thankfully, our consensus was the pros outweighed the few cons. Attending Marine Valley saves a boatload of money per semester, allows flexible scheduling around classes and work, and most credits are transferable to a higher degree or educational institution. However, this is not always the case with higher educational degree or educational institution. However, oh, okay. <laughs> um, college students will face a whirlwind of debt that that totals to a national average of at least $25,000. Uh, $25, Tuition prices have become higher and higher each year, many of them nearly $80,000 per semester. Colleges expect to be given excess amounts of money for one to continue in furthering education, but over the years we, beco we become absolutely drowned in debt. To give more financial aid to students and work study chances to lower and middle income students is an issue because there are so many kids and other people who would like to go to college but simply can't afford it. 
It may be the kids that are lower and middle class who wh who could come up with new ways to dr drastically change <laughs> change the world. <laughs> Had they been given <laughs> that's that student. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Sorry. Education is meant to enlighten and broaden the minds of students, but in reality, all these major concerns only make it worse. <laughs> we cannot finish these issues overnight, but I think that if we take certain actions to better higher <laughs> education, that it can be done. <coughs> As mentioned before, me and my group have been educated about higher education we never knew existed. Higher education degrees are so essential to have on your resume. Everyone knows that, but what good does it do if you're not even able to get a job? Despite all the struggles the higher education comes with, it's still growing more and more every day. Also, as it's growing, the economy is shrinking. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, what does that mean? <coughs> a good question. Basically, I'm saying that the less and less kids are graduating college. Also, less and less people, less and less people will have to graduate college, the less chances we have of improving our economy. Not saying that people who graduate college are the only ones who, who can improve the world and make it better. In fact, some of the world's greatest ideas came for those who didn't graduate or go to college. Another downfall to higher education is cost of tuition and prices. Every day, every semester, the nation, the nation's student debt is increasing. This is a major issue of concern for almost every student who doesn't get a full ride. Even for those who are, who are sure they will get a good paying job after college will still have to pay back thousands of dollars old. Keeping high standards in college is very important. You have to make sure you stay on top of your game so that you don't fall behind. A lot of students drop out of college when it gets harder, even down themselves. This is why we encourage not just us doing this, but the parents also to set the bar high and help support their kid along the way so that they don't feel alone. That way, the students can focus on classes and graduate. College students immediately face a challenge when thrust into the adult world. Expectations of being an adult counter the full and less pace, time, consuming work that comes with being a student. This can include the expectations of having to work a part-time job keeping a social life, doing well in classes, and finishing assignments when they are due. As students, we have the responsibility to get this all done because college requires you to be on task. Because we all, because we all have goals we need to reach in order for, for us to succeed. Prioritizing and getting things done create a balance for a college student. In doing this, we are receiving a higher education. Higher education is education beyond high school. It, it is expected that when receiving this higher education at Moraine Valley Community College, it is a great place to go if you want to save money or if you're undecided for what you want to do for your career. On the other hand, the negatives about Moraine Valley is how much it costs to buy books, and the parking at school is very hectic. The books at Moraine Valley would cost $80, but when you look online, for example, at Amazon or a regular bookstore, it costs like $25, and there is a book that you, and if there's a book that you bought and you ne never ended up using it, and it's br brand new sealed, by the end of the semester and you try to sell it back at the bookstore, they won't even give you full credit for it, which is ridiculous. And the only reason they do this is just because we believe it, it's because of the money, which makes things harder for kids. As for the parking, it can be really hard to find parking at school because sometimes there will be no spaces left to park at and you have to keep searching until you find an empty spot and that wastes a lot of your time and that can make you late to class and that can affect your grade in the end. Higher education is there to help people and fill individuals with knowledge and realize what is really out there in the real world. It's to help you get an understanding to be ready for big challenges you, you will have to take for your future job. All in all, I, th I think that if students and parent parents team, out, team up together and get their word out to the government for betting providing loans and aids for students, for students or either getting the wor word to the board of these big universities about focusing on what's important in higher education rather than competition of other schools. Change in higher education is something that needs to be fixed today before it gets more out of hand. Let's stand together and make higher education how it should be for college students. You, you want the, uh, 
We want the purpose and drive where the students don't go to college because they simply don't want want to be the issue of financial issues coming to place. As an assembly of four freshman college students, the we need to start taking these actions to have the right to receive higher education. These, these actions may not come easy, but with one action. This sends a whole message to the college students that we can work together and make a difference. And we stand up and make a change. A whole reaction of actions will go into place and higher education can be appreciated and practiced. Testing, testing. Yeah, that's cool. All right, how's it going, guys? So um, we're here to talk about the model of higher education here in Herit Moraine Valley, but also um, here in America and the society we live in. So we got we have liberal arts schools, we have tech schools, we got trade schools, we got professional colleges, post grad schools, and we also have community colleges. And um, at community colleges, it honestly is a lot better than going to other universities where you're going to pay a lot of money and spend a lot of time there. But at the same time, I feel like all the colleges provide the same purpose for everyone, for all the students that want to attend. And I feel like in order for the setting of higher ed to change, I feel like the entire society kind of has to change in a way. We would like to personally see a society where higher education of the general population is valued much more than defense, corporate endeavors, political nonsense, and uh, like the Kardashians, for example. Um, I think that people that are scholars and people that are intelligent should be getting a lot more attention than the other people within our society. And we're here to talk about the pros, cons of Moraine, and uh, basically sum up our vision for higher ed. Um, so of course we already know the positives that Moraine has to offer. And one of the largest ones is uh, the, diver the diverse student body. It benefits students because it helps them interact with students of different cultures. Um, some, Marine, some programs that Marine has to offer is the uh, internship program, and that gives students hands-on experience while they are still getting their college education and lets them get a feel for what they want to do. Um, a unique thing that Marine has to offer is a agree-to-degree program, and which ensures the college completion and graduation rate. Um, another thing that Moraine has is the transfer program, which they, uh, Moraine allows most of their credits to be transferred to a four-year university, which allows students to save a bunch of money, and then it doesn't affect them negatively in the long run. All right. Well, um, so our plan, we got a little bit of something for everyone they can do, but first I want to start off with what teachers, uh, instructors can do. Uh, to make education more accessible and beneficial for students. And the first thing I want to talk about is uh, this problem with requiring unnecessary materials for classes, um, like books. Like a lot of my classes, I can say right now, I spent $120 on my psychology book and haven't opened it once. And part of that came from the access code that I never used once. And another class, biology, I paid about 40 bucks for the book, had to go back and pay another 60 for the access code, and all it is for is taking short online quizzes. Now, I guess I'm just paying $60 to get easy points for the class, but I don't see the point in this. I think there's a lot, a lot of better ways to go about that, which kind of brings me to my next point, uh, utilizing technology. So before I came to Moraine, since this is my first semester here, I had no idea what a flipped classroom was until I came into this comm class. And I really like the idea of it, and I think it's very useful. And I think, for one, it can definitely replace uh, books and other things that we don't need. You could put online quizzes on there if you wanted. You have your own website. Or even using just Blackboard for things like that can be a lot of like very helpful and replace unnecessary books that you don't ever open and it also gives more time in class for like discussion and activities that can actually enrich the learning instead of just sitting down and taking PowerPoint notes and taking tests afterwards so uh, now Danny over here 
is going to tell you about what the students can do to help the situation. Thanks, Nick. Um, some of the main things the students can do to change is would be by just informing the general public, uh, voting, and volunteering. By uh, voting, you can vote uh, nationally or locally because every little bit does help. Uh, informing people, just letting family and friends know about the issues, even sharing articles on Facebook or joining one of their groups or blogs. Uh, they do have a lot of uh, valuable information that most people do not know about. And also uh, volunteering by helping the community. Uh, by helping the community around us, you need to discuss uh, on the Marine Valley website some of the opportunities and job resources that you could find out from volunteering are very beneficial. All right, so others have said that, uh, others have th that have spoken today have said that education should resemble more of an enlightening experience, which people can hang on to lifelong learning throughout their life, and that's something I totally agree with. Um, I think this formality of going to school just to get a degree, and you know, it's cool because that's, that's how we're gonna end up feeding our children and getting a life and establishing a future, but at the same time, I feel like that shouldn't be the sole purpose of getting an education. I don't want to be a banker. I don't want to be on Wall Street. What I want to do is either get a degree in anthropology or political science. And the thing is, I've been doing a lot of research lately, and they're saying that the jobs nowadays aren't paying enough if you get a degree in anthropology or political science in America. And I look at that, and I'm just like, I have no idea what I actually want to do then. I know, which, I, wanna, I know what degrees I want to get in life. I know which colleges I plan on transferring to within the next year. But I literally don't know what I want to do with the rest of my life. And the part of that, I think, has to do with the fact that there's all this hype about the formality of just getting a degree, graduating, starting a family, and moving on with life, which I think people should worry about bettering themselves, improving themselves, working on their individual being, and becoming better human beings. Um, I feel like our, our world is run by a lot of people that shouldn't be running our world. And I feel like us as humans and us as citizens have the power to challenge things. If we all agreed to look into things, open our minds, and question things, just like the historical philosophers used to do, and people of that sense, the civil rights leaders, if things get changed, they can only get changed with the power of the people. We have the power to change things. It's not one person that can change things, even though that has somewhat happened in the past. It's the masses that need to awaken. And I feel as if higher ed in the entire world, but also exclusively in America, could have much better of an influence on the people who are part of it. And it should be much more. It should be much, much more than just the formality of getting a degree and putting food on the table for your family. I feel like we should be able to benefit from something in the long run. We should be able to learn from something. And we should all be able to want to change the world. As uh, the late, great Malcolm X once said, he said, it doesn't matter how free the country you live in is, as long as you're trapped in the prison of your own mind. And I feel like that's something we should all hang on to and we should all think about on a daily basis. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions? No questions? All right, thank you. Uh, fantastic job, everybody. Um, so we heard a lot from our students today. Uh, and one thing that we, we, I think they were all uh, pretty uh, articulate in some of their concerns, but uh, one thing that we talked about through our deliberative dialogue process is the importance of listening to not, you know, we, we tend to listen to the flaws in people's language sometimes, right? But part of our deliberative dialogue process, we talked about the importance of listening to what people mean, you know, seeking that meaning behind what they're saying. And I think there was a lot of meaning here today. We heard a lot of concerns from these students about the challenges they feel that they're facing and that we're facing as, as a country with regard to higher education. So uh, I think this might be a good time to invite any questions or comments. We've got some experts in the room from various areas. If you'd like to comment or question anything of our students, please, please let me know and I'll run over with the mic or anybody. And if not, that's okay too. But, uh, but um, what we can do now then, I'd like to invite everybody in the room to uh, do two things. Check out these, these visual uh, representations of what the students had to say today and of course please do not leave this room without checking uh, stopping at the tables that are set up in the back from uh, various uh, representatives of uh, uh, student service series on campus again 
many of the things that you all talked about, I think the people in the room back there have, can have some insights, can have some expertise to lend you all. So, so please, a mix and mingle, that's kind of the point right now, but I'd also like to just finally say thank you to all of our students and commend them on their courage for coming up here.